uh, a vision it is like a it is like a, you know you're, when you walk in darkness yeah you cannot be able to see where you are going specifically right but uh, when you are in light yeah. you know where you are going uh -huh. a blind person cannot uh, be able to identify the place that is going correctly without using the the stick that he usually uses yeah but he must be directed by something mm -hmm. so even in life there is the thing that uh, directs us right. so you know the vision in vision there are the mantras that direct us mm. so when you are having a vision you are knowing where specifically you are going yeah. but uh, a person that doesn't have a vision can, you cannot specifically say that he's going somewhere mm. he'll just be living and uh, rotating in the same same place or right. revolving in the same place he'll yeah. be doing the same things today tomorrow because there's there's no that target yeah. When the hinds are blindfolded and mm -hmm. you are told to hit or shoot a target, mm -hmm. you cannot be able to shoot a target. Okay. So even in life, when uh, uh, you, want to, uh, you want to go somewhere, right. there must be the blueprints that directs you towards reaching that place. But not, not so many people have that ability of writing down the nitty gritties of what you want to achieve until you do something called self-introspection. I don't know. I don't know if anyone has ever done that, but let me come back to you. Uh, you, you, you said, you, <laughs> please remind me, why did you say you want to see yourself in the next 10 years? Oh, I said that uh, I see myself developing into becoming a great leader come in the next 10 years to come. So I stand in the, in the field of uh, becoming a great politician, in wherever I come from, and maybe here in our school, your own university of Nairobi, uh -huh. uh, that's where my field lies. All right. Yeah. So, uh, next question still, why is it important to have a vision board as a person? Do you have one? Maybe you can break it down for us as well. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, it is good for a person to be visioned, uh, to be a visionary person, because uh, in this life, we have uh, to set goals and uh, we have the dreams and the, uh, and the goals that we have set for ourselves. Uh, focusing on our great people who have achieved in this life, great leaders who have achieved, like people like uh, 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 US President Barack Obama. He just came from nowhere, and uh, he developed and became a US President. And he never knew whether that one could be achieved. Mm -hmm. So for me and uh, for the other people, I have, uh, I see myself being a great person. I just want to be visionary as I am. Being a charismatic leader, it's something that we should put back in our minds, that we should uh, uh, join hands and uh, work through, because uh, so many people are great leaders, former or our forefathers, who fought for our independence. They still had a, a vision. Mm -hmm. People like, uh, Nelson Mandela, they fought for the independence of their people, and that's why we need to have such kind of a, a knowledge and understanding and wisdom. That's why we can, we can develop and become such kind of people in, in our nation and right. become a people of change and uh, devolution. In, in your name, I'm really confused a little bit. Is it the H, it stands for His, His Excellency yeah, or yeah, something? Sure. Yeah, sure. Oh, so, well, but your real names are Kalonzo Mathias. I'm um, Kalonzo Mathias. All right, uh, <laughs> because you're chairman in Comrades Union, so I was really wondering, uh, yeah. excellent. does it mean, is it a title that you get when you become a leader at your institution? Uh, yeah, that's a title when I got into UN, I students started calling me His Excellency, you see, when I just, I was uh, just interrogating with them, I just conversing with them, All right. they just gave me that name and I saw it, it is suitable for me. Oh, to right. Quote it I get you, I get you, I get you now. And yeah. William Geremi. So, so mm -hmm. uh, maybe I love you guys to just paint for us a picture of how is it like to uh, be who you are. Because you're also an author, an evangelist, and the Edenske organization that you mentioned. So, uh, take us through that journey of how you walked to become this person. And now you're here on TV. Okay, it has not been a, an easy journey. You know, as a, as a person that is growing up, for you specifically to be able to reach uh, to a place that you are going, there are a lot that happens. There are messes. It is like a baby that is uh, beginning to, to, that has just been born and uh, has some few months or years and wants to begin to walk. So he must uh, crawl, 
he must stand, he must fall. So even in life, before I reach where I am specifically, mm. there are uh, places that have uh, crawled, there are places that have risen, there are places that have fallen. Mm. Uh, fell. They have fell. Mm. Uh, my journey began at uh, University of Nairobi. That's the place that I think, it, uh, although it was a blessing in a discuse, mm -hmm. because um, at the University of Nairobi back then in 2015, uh, I was there and uh, I was not that good person, which you people can say that is that good person. Good person in terms of character or academic performance? In terms of character. Mm -hmm. Meaning you had your own nefarious ways that were yeah. not acceptable yeah. at the institution. At the inter Maybe institution. What they, if you can pinpoint. Because uh, I remember when I joined campus, I was that kind of innocent guy. You know, I, after I came back, uh, after uh, coming back from, um, uh, after, after high school, I was that person that was that kaholi, that person that uh, the church goer, that mm -hmm. innocent soul. So when I came to campus, I, I felt like exploring life now. Uh -huh. And uh, in the process of exploring life, I found myself in uh, drug addiction. Mm. And uh, <laughs> in that, I lost focus. So how did you get to a place of exploration? Because everybody, actually when everybody joins campus, they're always mm. new. <laughs> You're mm. always green to a lot of things until mm. you start engaging and indulging. And it starts with bad company and peer pressure. Yeah. And the need to feel that you identify with a certain group of people. So what happened? So specifically what happened is that I found a certain, in those days the, there were uh, cartels and gangs that were operating in the University of Nairobi. Yeah, they were, you can say they were the wise men gang, there was the Pangakazi, all those, there were gangs that were Which operating. Was this? That was back then in 2015, 2014, 2015 there. Mm, okay. Yeah, so uh, I wanted to identify myself with one, uh, one uh, with at least I be in a certain gang because at that time I had aspiration also becoming a leader. And in UN at that time you could not become a leader unless first of all you associated yourself with a certain gang. Yeah, in my oh, friend here yeah, knows. Right or wrong? Because <laughs> uh, you're there. Uh, for now, uh, that is not a thing. Mm. All right. Yeah. Mm. For now, I think uh, Professor Mbidi did his things, and uh, there were things that were, <laughs> there were reformations that were brought, mm. but that this is now during UNSA. Yeah, yeah. But during Sonu's days, they were, it was a different story. Okay. During Babu Wino's days, mm. right. it was a different story mm. uh, from the story that is happening right now in uh, Mm. Uh, in uh, Unsa. Okay. So take us through what happened finally. Yes. So How did you start engaging? What drugs were this? Mm, I began by by bang, because mm. uh, we used to sell bang uh, at uh, in the hostels. Mm. We used to supply bang. I uh, used to all those uh, <laughs> hard drugs, narcotics. Yeah. So in the process, I found myself also addicted using this, the drug that we are using, you know, as kete. Mm. Kete is some kind of, ni kama kaleka, you used to, it's like a chalk. It's like chalk ya, ya, ya kuandika kwa blackboard. Is eh. it a slang word? Yeah, it? so it is known as kete. Oh, professionally? No, professionally, yeah. it is like uh, oh, hero. Uh, it is a, nile luga mta, ni nasema aji ni luga mta. Oh, yeah. shambeteng, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you found yourself using kete? Mm -hmm. So I found myself using Kete, and uh, in that process, uh, while we were in that gang, I remember uh, uh, I found myself in prison. Let me, if I can just uh, say how I find myself in prison. Briefly? <laughs> Briefly. Yes, please. Uh, in 2015, there were students that were killed at the near St. Paul, St. Mm -hmm. Paul and uh, UN hostels in between right. there. So there were students that were killed while they were mugging people. So uh, in that day, I, I, I was a student leader already, school, school of economics, and uh, I was trying to defend them. I was trying to defend them. And in that process, I associated that I was among them that were mugging. Okay. And so due to that process, the whole thing, I found myself in prison. Now for how long were you jailed? I was not jailed. Mm -hmm. I was remanded. Mm -hmm. remanded. And then they bailed you out, your parents? Uh, at that time, uh, my parents were not in capacity because the bond was too high. It was two million. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I had to spend all the six years casing in prison until I came out. 
Yeah. yeah. So finally, as we exit on that story, yeah. how did you become an author? Because an author is a very respectable person. Anybody who has a book, I rank you a thousand percent. So what book did you write and what is the content in the book? So the book that I wrote is known as uh, The Gavel of Redemption. Mm -hmm. If you know Gavel, Gavel is that uh, the one that the judge uses at the court mm -hmm. of law. So due to my experiences that I obtained in prison, because it is in prison that I obtained Christ, and I became right. an evangelist while I'm in prison. Right. I was born again in prison. Okay. So in that book, I'm trying to share my experiences that can be able to help youths mm -hmm. uh, to be able to navigate in life when they are in tough situations or problems. All right. Mm -hmm. Correct. So you'll tell us the about the, uh, we'll tell us more details about that. What about you? What do you do at your end that has put you in a place that you feel in the next 10 years, you're going to be the next person you're looking out for? You're pursuing criminology. Yeah. Uh, definitely you'll be working with the DCI. You know, what have you said that will actually get you there? So for me, uh, I would like first to start with my journey story, wherever I, uh, where I came from, when I was born and how um now at your end so uh i started realizing myself while i was in back in class seven and that is uh i into the field of the nini of the politics that's when i just decided to go for a position in our class as a class uh, governor by then and uh we just had to campaign for that time so i campaigned and uh, the students uh, just voted for me. Uh, after that, I went to class eight. Uh, I became the students. Uh, they just wanted me to be the president, but uh, you know uh, that uh, that task. Uh, it is that one I never wanted because uh, the teachers uh, will be rushing up and down since I have my exam. So I just decided to go for a speaker. They just chose me to be the speaker of the school. Uh, from then, I did well. I proceeded to my high school. I went to Kitondo Boys High School, mm. it's the high school for my four years. So in Kitondo, I became a, I, in Form 1, Form 2, I was just a prefect in Form 3, uh, Form 4, I became the school prime minister. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so that's where I did. Uh, uh, and from there, I just focused with my, with my studies. I never knew whether I will get myself into your own. Maybe oh, to so it happened like a miracle. Yeah, yeah. To me, it was even. I never knew whether I would just yeah. make it in life and get myself into a university. Mm. So it was Why? just. Is it because of the family conditions and where you were brought up? Uh, in or uh, yeah, yeah. Because uh, I had some, you know, school fees. Uh, it had a very a lot of burden to me. Okay. Uh, my parents were not that stable enough. Uh, okay. Because uh, in our family, we are two of us who were in high school. Mm -hmm. There were others who were back in college and university. Ah. Uh, still, the parent was the same parent who was being providing for all those kids. Okay. So it was, it became a very huge task for him. Uh, so how did you join UN? And finally, uh, fi position? Uh, finally, I joined UN. Uh, I I did well in my KCC, and I just. Uh, with this Nini Kusips, they just put Nini, uh, mm. posted me at your end, and I found myself at your end. So help now? Still on help? Yeah, You're yeah. on help as a student? Yes, sir. Help? You're on help? Yeah, yeah, I'm on Nini. I'm on help, that's easy. Oh. Uh, so, um, although the fees it is still challenging, by then it was so challenging, okay. but uh, we tried to overcome, and uh, we are still doing well. So I joined your end, University of Nairobi, and uh, it became, uh, you know, being at the Great University of Nairobi, you know, it is not just a simple thing. And you are coming from the village, a village guy coming to the yeah. University of Nairobi. Oh. And, you know, University of Nairobi is a very uh, world-class university that people aim to get in. So, and it is also a home of leaders, so I just feel much appreciated to be there. Okay, uh, because we, we actually have like eight minutes to go, so yeah. I, I can't let you tell the whole story, but definitely you will tell it. Uh, do you feel like Gen Z's in this day and age, I don't know, do you identify as a Gen Z or a millennial? Uh, Gen Z, is it? Are you a Gen Z or a millennial? Uh, uh, Gen Z. Gen Z, nice. Uh, you're the best fit for this question. Do you feel like most Gen Zs do not care about where they'll be in the next 10 years and everything that they do is best on now? I can spend 10 million now, I don't care about you know, the next five years. And how do you 
experience that as, 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 as a person who is in campus in terms of just the general facets of your life in terms of progress? In terms of my, maybe in my progress, uh, maybe even a uh, student like us, for us we are uh, students, the little that we get, maybe we just program it or now we can utilize it well because back here in university it is somewhat challenging and uh, whatever small we get we need to utilize it well because uh, as for now you can see that uh, the how the uh, the uh, living standards have gone up so we need just to work with what we have uh, maybe to work with uh, comrades just they just survive you know here it is very hard but we are still managing all that. Kuinama ni kuenda bila food. So I'll get back to you still. Uh, uh, do you feel like people in this day and age are more conscious of their future than you know what will happen before even the future happens, or everybody is just trying to survive? Are people more on survival mode or concerned more about the future from your experience? Because you really have a comprehensive experience of life in general. Uh, the First of all, are you conscious of the future? Yeah, I'm conscious of the future. Uh -huh. Yeah, and I think that uh, one should be conscious of the future. You know, the Gen Z generation is um, a generation that lives uh, out of the end but not the means. They don't trust on the process. Yeah. But they, they are so much quick to the end, right. escaping the process. Okay. So in that mentality, because they have so much... Uh, program their mind to that mentality, mm -hmm. most of them uh, have no visions, they have no purpose, they have no direction, because uh, all that matters to them is the end, but not the process. Because the process, the vision is all about the process. Yeah. But when you say they don't trust the process, is it a must for someone to trust the process? Like, why should you wait for 10 years to be a TV host while well, you can get some few connections and jump in and become the next big thing in media? Why is it a must to wait for 10 years? Uh, it's not okay. It's all about how smart you are in the market. Okay. It requires uh, uh, the, the capability to be smart. Mm -hmm. Because there's also a person that can wait for the 10 years. Mm -hmm. There's also a person that <coughs> can uh, take a short period of time and navigate his ways. But mm -hmm. it's all about how smart are you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As long as it's not a devious means that you're using to, to no. be able to g reach the end, uh -huh. it is well. But if it are devious means that you're using to reach the end, yeah. then there is an error there. All right, so do you believe shortcuts are long cuts indeed? Is I a shortcut a long cut? Because uh, I'm also looking at it. Uh, mm -hmm. What should I have to go through this pain while I can still have you know, somebody just fix some two, three things mm -hmm. and I pop up and pull up? You know? Let me tell you one thing, that uh, shortcuts will never bring peace onto you. Okay. As long anything that you obtain through shortcut, mm -hmm. it never brings peace. Okay. Because there are a lot, because for example, right now, if I say, for example, uh, okay, I, I'm, I'm not putting him in, in a wrong pers perspective, but if I give my brother something like 10 million while he's in campus, okay. that 10 million, it's either it can kill him or it can make him survive. Mm. Uh -huh. sure. But uh, because how how will the ten million? <laughs> <laughs> you know, because somebody see ten million say, right now. Let's say your life is going to be better and better, bro. Okay, it will be better. Yeah. But uh, does he have the capacity? Uh -huh. is, my, is, 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 is his mind in that capacity to be able to handle that ten million? Okay, I get you now. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So you must pass through the process. You be trained. Mm -hmm. And then now you be in the in the in the correct situation. Yeah. For example, even leadership. If you can see in our country, right. there are uh, leaders that were elected while they are young, and uh -huh. some of them are misbehaving. Like who? <laughs> I cannot say which names. <laughs> like who exactly? Okay, some are misbehaving. Yeah. You can see their character, the way they are talking in the social media. Uh -huh. they, there's a lot of childishness, and uh, because they were they didn't pass through the correct process of being trained as leaders, but right. they just came instantly and became uh -huh. leaders. All right. Yeah. Sure. So, in short, people should trust the process. But, you know, we said the process should trust me mm -hmm. instead. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, how, are you trusting the process? Uh, are there things that you're eyeing that you want to achieve in between because you're in second year? You still have more, more years to go. Yeah, sure. Uh, one should uh, trust the process uh, because uh, it is a matter of believing. And uh, believing it is something which will uh, make us get, achieve what we want. Achieving something, it is not some just uh, 
uh, just a small thing, but we need to have that uh, to be in that field. We put ourselves into that uh, figure. We know that uh, we just come from somewhere and we need to achieve something. Maybe you can tell me what is trusting the process to you because you are a Gen Z. <laughs> what, what is trusting the process to you? We have definition of uh, trusting the process uh, before you become. Uh, sure, sure. Because uh, being in that uh, field for me, like I am the comrades, uh, chairman the, for the Comrade Forum at the University of Nairobi. Mm -hmm. I just believe and trust in the process that uh, in some few years I will uh, be the governor of the University of Nairobi and after maybe I get there I become the president of the University of Nairobi. So I am just trusting the process and I just, the people surround me, I just good, uh, build a good rapport with them and we just achieve what it is there for me. All right, good. Uh, back to you. you. You've written this book. You've said it's it's called The Den of what? Gavel of Redemption. Oh, Gavel of Redemption. Yeah. So uh, what, the, ex the experiences you've collected in your life, uh, the one that inspired writing that book, and you mentioned you want to inspire other young people that had or have a life like yours. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like in this day and age, a lot of people do not have a sense of direction? Like how do you turn into a PN initiative? Is there a need for people to have that sense of direction? And what does sense of direction mean in life? Okay, uh, first I'll uh, begin by uh, talking about the sense of direction. Uh, sense, uh, sense of direction is all about sobriety of the mind mm -hmm. and uh, knowing specifically where you are headed to and where you are going. Mm -hmm. Because when you are not sober in mind, when you do not have a, a clear direction you cannot have that sense sense is about uh, the purpose that you are having of yeah. living mm -hmm. because we are not products of biological accidents there was mm -hmm. something that we are born specifically to be able to to yeah. do yeah. so uh, in this current generation uh -huh. i'm an evangelist and i'm uh, i move around uh, talking to young people evangelist meaning you preach sometimes you quote the bible yeah i preach i quote the bible I even uh, I visit prisons, I visit high schools, yeah, to just preach the gospel of Christ. Okay. Now, as I meet these young people, uh, and this is now where I came up with the idea of Eden's Care Organization, mm -hmm. because it's all about uh, trying to change the mind, uh, mindset, mm -hmm. uh, specifically for those uh, youth that are uh, in the ghettos and uh, those that are in coming out of prisons. Yeah. Because I identify one thing that uh, most of the youth that are in the ghettos and those that are in prison, yeah. one thing that they lack is a person that could mentor them and be able to train their mind to see where they are headed on to. But you know, some story in a mentorship, sometimes mm -hmm. uh, they say it's not necessary. You can be your own mentor. Mm -hmm. Is it a must you find somebody to show you the direction? Is it a must? You know, for example, you, you can be born in a place whereby uh, the mentorship uh, can be negated. Mm -hmm. But uh, there are people that are born in an environment whereby the mentorship is required. Because in their family circle, no one has ever achieved anything beyond them. Right. Because they will try to acquire, synthesize, or they try to acquire whatever they are, mm -hmm. they, have, uh, they, have, uh, they are seeing around it's their like environment. It's just a limiting boundary. Nobody has ever gone beyond this. Yeah, never gone. Yellow Memal is a high school and Kaput. That's Kaput. It. Mm -hmm. Right, so you need an authority to yeah. guide you yeah. so that you make further process. Yeah, to such people, uh -huh. they need someone that can be able to direct them right. and be able to take them uh, somewhere. All right. Uh, I want you to hold on that point. I still come back to you. Do you personally have a mentor or someone that you look up to, in, even in your line of career and academia as well? Uh, family, first of all, it is a, a can mentor someone very well, family. Uh, your parents, they can mentor you very well. And uh, the people who you, you are, you, the people, your friends, and uh, the people, maybe you, uh, maybe the people that you originate from together from the same, you know, background. There are so many people who can mentor someone, you know, in, in your field, in your career that you are pursuing. But for you, for you, are there any that you, you'd mention? Uh, I can mention about, yeah, yeah, I have my cousin who always mentors me very well in my career path. And I just appreciate her for that work. Oh, what is she? Uh, but they'll also tell me, are there characteristics and qualities of a mentor? Like, does she or she have to have achieved some certain things? Am I just any ordinary person? Because she's mm -hmm. mentioning his cousin, 
Mm -hmm. And I really don't know what your cousin does. Maybe you can tell me. Oh, my cousin, she's, uh, she has done accounting. Also, she's at Kenya Revenue Authority. All right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, does does a, a mentor has to have some certain qualities before they guide you to the path of achieving your dreams? Yeah. A mentor yeah. must, uh, you know, for you to associate with that mentor, first of all, uh -huh. there is something that connects you yeah. to that mentor. So first thing that that mentor should love is a person that gives you interest. Okay. For example, he has said that uh, his cousin is, a, is doing a, a, is a, an accountant. Right. So for him also, he may be having the aspiration of becoming an accountant. That's why he's associating himself with the cousin as a mentor. Yeah. Yeah. For example, if I want to become a, a leader or a politician, mm -hmm. I'll not associate myself with a doctor. Okay, there's something that I will acquire from a doctor. Yeah. But uh, it will not be like the one that I will find, for example, in a personality like Raila. Right. Or I find in a personality like Roto. Mm. No. So there must okay. be something that join us, first of all, to, to be able to associate with one another. Then, okay. I mean, he is also supposed to be a person that uh, is envied also by the society. Not a person that, if you can take as your mentee, mm. for example, let's take... Uh, a mentor. Mm, because the person uh, yeah, a mentor. Is a mentee. A mentor. Yeah. yeah. If you can take, for example, the like of the, <laughs> if you can say that uh, Madari, Madari uh, that, that uh, criminal that was killed, it was not Madari. 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 Mm. If you can say that Madari was your mentor, yeah. then who are you? Who do you want to become? Right. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So for anyone to achieve their dream, they need a mentor. Yeah. At some point. Yeah. All right. Uh, we have to go. We are out of time. So uh, mm -hmm. your book. Uh, where can people find it? Your book. Uh, they can find it. Uh, in, uh, specifically, they are sold in the. In the church libraries, okay. Uh, but also, you can find it in the zona savannis. Mm. Okay. All right. Mm. So, so we have to go. Thank you both for coming. Okay. Because you're out of time. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, Kalonzo Matthews and William Gareme. And that's where we put it. Mm -hmm. A period, in it was a comma period. <laughs> and we'll definitely see you tomorrow for Health and Entrepreneurship Tuesday on the hashtag or in the morning at 2244 channel at Brian Sakono one. Have a fantastic Monday. Mm -hmm.